Thank you for having me here today. I offer you this morning a little medley of Sunday poems by my favorite authors, actually, because what could be better uh, than sharing the poetry I love with people who love poetry? From David White. Enough. These few words are enough. If not these words, this breath. If not this breath, this sitting here, this opening to the life we have refused again and again until now. <coughs> until now. <coughs> Invitation by the Unitarian Universalist Reverend and poet Angela Herrera. This is a prayer of invitation, an invitation to you there with your happiness and your burden, with your hopes and regrets, an invitation for you if you feel good today, an invitation for you if you do not, if you are aching. There are so many ways to ache. Whoever you are, however you are, wherever you are in your journey, this prayer is an invitation into peace. Peace in yourself and peace in yourself and with every breath, peace in yourself. Maybe your soul is heavy. Maybe it's troubled. And peace can only take up residence in a corner there, only on the edge today. But with all that's going on in the world and in your life, Nimodo, it does not matter. All that you need lies within you. All that you need for the deep and comforting peace to grow. May peace spread from your core into your life, and may it pour from your life into the world. And in the world, may it shine on all beings. May it be so. From the German poet Rilke from his Book of Hours. God speaks to each of us as he makes us and walks us silently out of the night. These are the words we dimly hear. You, sent out beyond your recall, go to the limits of your longing. Embody me. Flare up like flame and make big shadows I can move in. Let everything happen to you, beauty and terror. Just keep going. No feeling is final. Don't let yourself lose me. Nearby is the country they call life. You will know it by its seriousness. Give me your hand. On prayer from Czesław Miłosz. You ask me how to pray to someone who is not. All I know is that prayer constructs a velvet bridge and walking it we are aloft as on a springboard above landscapes the color of ripe gold transformed by a magic stopping of the sun. That bridge leads to the shore of reversal where everything is just the opposite and the word is unveils a meaning we hardly envisioned. Notice I say we. There, everyone separately feels compassion for others entangled in the flesh and knows that if there is no other shore, we will walk that aerial bridge all the same. Self-Portrait by David White. It doesn't interest me if there is one God or many gods. I want to know if you feel loved or feel abandoned. If you know despair or can see it in others. I want to know if you are prepared to live in the world with its harsh need to change you. If you can look back with firm eyes saying this is where I stand. I want to know if you know how to melt into that fierce heat of living falling toward the center of your longing. I want to know if you are willing to live day by day with the consequence of love and the bitter, unwanted passion of sure defeat. I have been told in that fierce embrace, even the gods speak of God. Pear like a potato by John Updike. 
Was it worms having once bitten and then wilted away, or some canker known only to nurserymen? Whatever the reason, the pear, fresh plucked from the tree where it leans and struggles in the garden's dappled corner, is a heavy dwarf head whose faceless face puckers and frowns around a multitude of old problems. Its furrowed brow and evil squint and pursy mouth and pinched in reptilian ear re-scrambling feature for feature as I rotate this weight in my hand, this friendly knot of fruit flesh, this pear like a potato. It wanted to grow, and it did. It had a shape in mind, and if that shape in transit was waylaid by scars, by cells too mean to join in, leaving dents between bulges like quilt buttons, well, it kept going anyway. Our brains are like this, no doubt, having swelled in spite of traumas, of languages we never learned, of grudges never set aside but grown around, like parasites that died but forever snapped the rhythm whereby cell links up to cell. Plato's was a manner of speaking. Perfection's an idea that body and soul make a run at. Falling short, they fill this world instead with the lopsided jumble that is. The congregation of the failed, but not uncheerful, like this poor pair. <laughs> tiny little poem by me. Dare to just be. Realize the strength in weakness in the space between stronger forces. You do not need to be the mountain or the man rolling the boulder up its hill. You can be the stone resting, the apple already fallen, the shade that gives comfort because it is not the sun. by Barbara Ross. You can't have it all, but you can have the fig tree and its fat leaves like clown hands gloved with green. You can have a touch of the 11-year-old finger on your cheek waking you at 1 a.m. to say, the hamster is back. <laughs> you can have the purr of the cat and the soulful look of the black dog, the look that says, if I could, I would bite every sorrow until it fled. And when it is August, you can have it August and abundantly so. You can have love, though often it will be mysterious, like the white foam that bubbles up at the top of the bean pot over the red kidneys until you realize foam's twin is blood. You can have the skin at the center of a man's leg, so solid, so doll-like. You can have the life of the mind, glowing occasionally in priestly vestments, never admitting pettiness, never stooping to bribe the sullen guard who will tell you all roads narrow at the border. You can speak a foreign language sometimes, and it can mean something. You can visit the marker on the grave where your father wept openly. You, can, you can't bring back the dead, but you can have the words forgive and forget hold hands as if they meant to spend a lifetime together. And you can be grateful for makeup, the way it kisses your face, half spice, half amnesia, grateful for Mozart, his many notes racing one another toward joy, for towels sucking up the drops on your clean skin, and for deeper thirsts, for passion fruit, for saliva. You can have the dream, the dream of Egypt, the horses of Egypt, and you riding in the hot sand. You can have your grandfather sitting on the side of your bed, at least for a while. You can have clouds and letters and leaping distances and Indian food with yellow sauce like sunrise. You can't count on grace to pick you out of a crowd, but here is your friend to teach you how to high jump, how to throw yourself over the bar backwards until you learn about love, about sweet surrender. And here are periwinkles, buses that kneel, farms in the mind as real as Africa. And when adulthood fails you, you can still summon the memory of the black swan on the pond of your childhood, the rye bread with peanut butter and bananas your grandmother gave you while the rest of the family slept. There is the voice you can still summon at will, like your mother's. It will always whisper, you can't have it all. But there is this. Keeping quiet, Pablo Neruda. Now we will count to 12, and we will all keep still. 
This one time upon the earth, let's not speak any language. Let's stop for a second and not move our arms so much. It would be a delicious moment. Without hurry, without locomotives, all of us would be together in a sudden uneasiness. The fishermen in the cold sea would do no harm to the whales. The peasant gathering salt would look at his torn hands. Those who prepare green wars, wars of gas, wars of fire, victories without survivors would put on clean clothing and would walk alongside their brothers in the shade without doing a thing. What I want shouldn't be confused with final inactivity. Life alone is what matters. I want nothing to do with death. If we weren't unanimous about keeping our lives so much in motion, if we could do nothing for once, perhaps a great silence would interrupt this sadness, this never understanding ourselves and threatening ourselves with death. Perhaps the earth is teaching us when everything seems to be dead, and then everything is alive. Now I will count to 12, and you keep quiet, and I'll go.